The Airbus A380 is the world's largest passenger airliner and the only full-length double-decker jet airliner. Production of the aircraft stopped in December 2021 of the Super Jumbo. However, with post-COVID demand soaring, there has been a need from ex-operators to reactivate their A380s. With this in mind, is there enough of a business case for Airbus to bring the A380 back into production, either via a new engine option variant or with the current existing models right now? Let's try and find the answer to this question in this edition of the Avsource Doc. After the COVID-19 pandemic happened and air travel restrictions began to return to some form of normalcy, demand for travel increased dramatically. This encouraged some airlines to begin reactivating the Airbus A380s they had in storage during the pandemic. Etihad Airways is a big example of this, announcing back in December 2022 that they would reactivate four of their Super Jumbo aircraft. This was originally due to seeing incredible demand on their Abu Dhabi to London Heathrow flights. Between then and now, Etihad Airways has instead reactivated five aircraft and just this month announced plans to revive another two Airbus A380s into their fleet, with a new destination into the US on the horizon being Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Lufthansa was another example of an operator bringing back their A380s to life. In September 2023, the airline revealed that they would bring all eight of their A380s back to service within a two-year period. By that October, the airline also revealed that they would return the Super Jumbo back to Los Angeles. This means that by the end of 2025, all eight A380 Super Jumbos in the German carrier's fleet will be back in service. The A380's charm for operators has been its ability to help with high demand driven routes. Several airlines have leaned on the capabilities during peak seasonal travel. This is reflected in higher monthly A380 flights occurring typically during the airline's busiest periods. 2019 was the last full year of flying before COVID restrictions impacted travel. In 2019, the A380's largest operator was Emirates with 61,679 flights as per data from Flight Radar 24. The airline operated just over 50% of all Airbus A380 flights for the year. Singapore Airlines was the second largest operator with 10,427 flights recorded in 2019. The Changi-based carrier remained the only airline to break the 10,000 mark alongside Emirates. At 4,000 fewer flights than Singapore Airlines, Lufthansa rounded off the top three for 2019 with a recorded 6,413 movements. There is even a startup airline aiming to utilise the Airbus A380. Global Airlines, based in the UK, are currently in the process of a maintenance overhaul of one of their Airbus A380s, registered 9 Hotel Global, in Dresden with EFW. Global Airlines aims to start operations next year and seeks to eventually have a fleet of four Airbus A380s before growing onwards. So there is clearly an appetite there. To showcase the sheer size of the Emirates A380 fleet, between the first and third largest operators in 2019, there was a difference of 55,266 flights back in 2019 before Covid hit. Nowadays, of the 116 remaining Airbus A380s in their fleet, 94 are currently in service, with the other 22 currently in the works towards being reactivated. Emirates is very much a carrier keen to keep the Airbus A380 in their lifeblood for many years to come. Back in August 2024, the airline purchased five leased A380s in their fleet from lesser Doric Nimrod, reinforcing its strategy further of utilising these high-capacity aircraft on popular long-haul routes. One would suggest that Emirates would be seeking to look away from the Airbus A380 for more future generation aircraft. November 2023 saw Emirates place an order with Boeing for 55 more 777-9Xs and 35 777-8X aircraft. This top-up order, signed at the Dubai Air Show, brings their order book of the 777-X to 205 aircraft. This is also the aircraft pegged to be somewhat of a replacement to the Super Jumbo. 
However, at that air show, Emirates doubled down on the usage of their Airbus A380 through investments made pertinent to maintenance facilities, cabin retrofits, and more to keep the A380s going well into the 2040s. So it is clear in this regard that whilst Emirates have made substantial investments into the Boeing 777X, they are wanting to keep the A380 in their arsenal for as long as they possibly can. It is probably just as well that they are, given the news last week of the airline's president, Sir Tim Clark, showing disdain over a further delay of the 777X programme. The Boeing 777X will be delayed to 2026 for the passenger variant and 2028 for the cargo variant. It would be curious to see in this regard if Emirates would purchase the A380 once again in 2024. Even in November 2023, the airline did express interest in wanting a new A380, dubbed the A380neo, with new engines and better fuel efficiency. So it is something that they want more of, and are making the best out of their 116 aircraft that they have already. So the question to ask here is, is there even a business case for Airbus to do this? Some operators have completely eradicated the aircraft from their fleet, being Air France due to COVID-19, China Southern Airlines due to high operating costs, High Fly Malta due to COVID-19, Malaysia Airlines due to COVID-19 and high operating costs, and Thai Airways due to COVID-19 and restructuring. In June 2023, Qatar Airways confirmed that they would retire their Airbus A380s from next year. This is due to the airline beginning to take further deliveries of the A350-1000 from a reinstated order at Airbus. The full phase-out of the Super Jumbo at the Qatari carrier is expected to be completed by 2028. Asiana Airlines and Korean Air will be retiring their Airbus A380s from 2026, with Lufthansa looking to retire theirs after 2030. As for Qantas, they will be replaced in 2032 due to the Airbus A350-1000 ULR aircraft that they will be receiving under the Project Sunrise initiative. With the last few remaining operators already planning for the retirement of their Super Jumbos as well as fleet renewal and expansion, it is clear in this case that there hasn't been much of a business case for Airbus to return the A380 to the production line. There is also the price tag of an Airbus A382. When it was on sale, the price tag per jet was a whopping $455 million, although granted on the second-hand market it will be cheaper. For contrast, the A350-1000 comes in at around $355.7 million, with the Dash 900 coming in at around $317 million. With this in mind, it is more cost-effective for airlines to purchase either the A350 or maybe even the 787 as the alternative to the Super Jumbo. Yes, the passenger capacity doesn't match, but the airline's argument would be to probably put on more flights per day or per week, as it would still be cheaper. That being said, however, it also depends on whether your airline is successful. Take Emirates, for example. Their hub-to-hub -hub style has worked well with the A380 and has been able to fill their planes more easily as a result. And that success enables Emirates to spend $442 million per 777-9X or $410 million per 777-8X, which is probably going to be the closest replacement to the A380 in terms of high-density seating and range. However, as we have seen with Qantas and their foray into Project Sunrise, the Airbus A350-1000 ULR would be able to cover the range, but what about the seating capacity? It could also be the case that the demand for these services are lower, but can make more money on a premium offering similar to what Singapore Airlines do with their A350-900 ULR. It could very well be that for strategic reasons, most operators wouldn't opt to bring the A380 back into their fleet as it doesn't suit their business needs. On the passenger's perspective, there does seem to be support for returning the Airbus A380 to the production line. In a poll conducted by Aviation Source, 71.9% of people believe that Airbus should indeed bring the A380 back into production, with 28.1% saying no. So passengers still want it, but will the airlines listen to their passengers in that regard? In conclusion, the Airbus A380 has the same effect on a passenger or operator as the Boeing 747 did. Although demand is rising and is causing existing operators to reactivate their Super Jumbos, we do not know how long this will last for. 
Whilst the likes of Emirates have expressed interest over an A380 Neo, there needs to be more business viability than an airline making a triple digit order and that is that. For this program to have any further viability, it needs new interest from different stakeholders and with that new interest it needs to be significant like how Emirates is behaving with it. If you get maybe 10 or 15 airlines with that same level of interest, then that is when the viability will increase. It is clear also that passengers and the industry want to see the aircraft back in production as it represented one of the many greatest milestones in aviation history. It is a shame that it didn't get to last as long as the Boeing 747 did on the production line. But as we all know, this industry changes in cyclical moments. And at this stage, with the presence of the 777X, the A350, the A321LR and XLR, as well as other aircraft, this doesn't create a space right now for the A380. With airlines trying to keep the aircraft in their fleet as long as possible, it will be interesting to see whether demand rises more year on year to the point where the questions will begin to be asked. We won't know unless we try. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more videos on the Aviation Source YouTube channel. Also, be sure to subscribe to our eco program to help us make a difference to the environment at this crucial time. For now, this has been the Avsource Doc and we will see you in the next video. Bye for now.